Hi, my name is Neil Bolger, and today I'm going to talk about eQuest and the cooling and heating design days that the software uses. Um, so eQuest is, as you're probably aware, an annual energy simulation software, and this is eQuest 365. Um, in addition to running an annual energy estimate using an annual weather file and inputs about the building, eQuest is also looking for information on the hottest and the coldest day in the year. And it's actually using that information to size the air conditioning system in the model. If you have a model with any type of HVAC system and the model does not specify how large cooling coils and fans are and other things like that, eQuest will use a cooling design day. It's a lot like loads programs out there like HAP or Trace. And so in this model I have set up, I actually currently have two design days down here, uh, one for heating, one for cooling. And as I click on each one of these, I'm on the Projects and Sites tab, you'll see it sort of highlights that in the spreadsheet mode. And spreadsheet mode is a little confusing to look at these, so I'll just go into a cooling design day. If you don't have one, I'll show you how to make one from scratch in a second. Let's analyze the one that's in here. So here it is, I double clicked. You can see this is the cooling design day. It says what, what day is it for? It's for cooling. And it asks for a number of inputs that you have to specify. So it asks for the highest dry bulb. And the reason you might specify this is because you may want to size equipment at a hotter temperature than the weather file peaks at. For a lot of locations, a weather file, which is a typical average year, will have a high that maybe isn't an extreme or maybe isn't um, a 0.04 or 0.1 percent condition such as ASHRAE might define. So for eQuest this is where you can create your design day so you have to put in the high dry bulb you would like equipment to be sized at, uh, the dry bulb range this specifies what the difference is between the hottest temperature and the lowest temperature on this design day, uh, the coincident wet bulb so this is how moist the air is outside at the exact same hour as the dry bulb. So here 91 degrees has a coincident wet bulb of 67. Um, the high hour and low hour, these I usually will leave default. Um, the month number, so this number here is where eQuest will assume that this peak day occurred at. Um, the start day, so it's starting on the 21st day of the seventh month, and then the number of days. So these last ones are, are a little confusing, the month number, start day, and number of days. Uh, the way I understand it is that eQuest will look for the hottest day, which is a combination of the dry bulb and the sun's intensity, and it will start on the seventh month because that's what I've specified and it'll start looking on the 21st day and it's actually gonna look for 120 days again this is a value I specified and I didn't for this project I, I sort of knew it would be the fall and I didn't quite know when in the fall so I said well let's start on the seventh month and just hunt over the period of 120 days if I actually change this to 365 I think eQuest might actually run and look at every single day of the year and see what day would result in the highest load. For now though, I, I'll leave it at 120. You might even lower this down to be 60 days. You don't need to hunt for too long. Um, but again, this can be sometimes important, not, not as important. I think getting the right month and the relative range to search around is about right. Again, this is just making it more the model a little more accurate in sizing HVAC equipment. Um, and over here there's some other conditions you could specify as well. I'm going to leave those default. And then heating design as well. You can see here heating is a lot simpler. You usually just put in the coldest temperature we would expect. Uh, here it says dry bulb high. Really this is just the uh, coldest dry bulb because we're looking at a heating design day. And then the rest I usually will leave default. If you don't have any of these, let me actually delete one. I'll delete it real quick. If you, there is no design to there, now we just have heating design, you can actually right click on the project tree and say create design day. And this will only show up if you don't have one of the two there. So I can say cooling 
design day. Uh, I will pick the cooling type, hit OK. And now it's going to prompt me for some input. So if you do this before you actually know these numbers, just pick some fillers because eQuest loves to uh, loves to freeze you up unless you actually put in values. So there I put in some some default values and and we're done. So now we have two design days. This is what it's going to use again when it sizes equipment. If you did not have these, eQuest would just use the hottest day, the model sees based on the weather file it's pointing to. So here this weather file is pointing to the TMY2 folder. It's looking at Seattle, looking for the hottest day there. And when you actually run the model, um, I already ran it once. I'll just look at the output really quick. You can see where this design data shows up in the sim file outputs. So if you would like to see the result um, of, of the peak load calculation, in a sense, uh, there is a report that you can look at in the sim file that shows both the, the load on this cooling design day and heating design day, and then the load that eQuest found um, just by finding the hottest and coldest day in the weather file. So you can kind of start to see the difference. So if you look at the LSC, the Building Peak Loads Components Report, uh, immediately here it comes up, it actually says at the top, Design Day Report. So here you can see cooling load uh, it has 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 67 wet bulb. I think that's what I put in there. And so it it actually ran, and I think we started on the 21st. Looks like July the 29th. Apparently had the highest sun gains, and it sort of breaks down all the the uh, the loads into the space, uh, the wall, the roof, heat, the windows, different things like that. This does not include the ventilation load, just to point that out, a little warning at the bottom. And here's the heating day as well. So if you wanted to see what the weather file peak was, you can actually look at standard report. And here, now we can actually see in the weather file, it actually found a peak at September 3rd. And that drivable peak was at 91 degrees. Sometimes, so that is actually hotter. So what might be happening in this scenario, if we were to look further, is the HVAC system might be slightly undersized and we might have slightly more hours out of throttling range than not. Sometimes if I do have too many hours out of throttling range and I've neglected to look at my design day conditions, a lot of times I will if, go over here and delete these and then run my model without any specified design days. The reason I do that ideally is to see if the model will size itself using just the weather file and result in less throttling hours. It's sort of a way of checking like is this the problem? Is my design day the thing driving me crazy and making the model not converge? Just an option but again design days are there and design days even have relationships to schedules. This is the last thing I'll show you really quick but if you were to look at any schedule such as miscellaneous schedule, this is the equipment schedule um, it's usually the week tab, so here's the annual schedule. Uh, if you go to the weeks tab down here, you can actually see there is a unique pointer for the heating design day and the cooling design day. So here's where you could actually, if you wanted to, create a unique schedule for the, this is for the electrical equipment in the building. Uh, right now it's just set to the weekday schedule, which looks like this, where you see it sort of starts at 20% and peaks at 90%. If you wanted to do a sizing run where you had this always be 100%, if that's the way maybe your peak load is sized by your engineers, maybe you would want to change this, make a new day schedule that's always one, and then go back here and change this pointer. Uh, it's really not something I change that often. I think it could make models a little more robust how they auto size things, but it won't be the end of the world if you forget about it. Uh, works pretty well. So that is it. So projects and sites, design days on this tab. They will change how equipment is sized and you can change a unique sizing file for every parameter such as the interior loads, the lighting, you name it, when the HVAC system is on and those things. Thanks everyone.